Hello, today we're gonna to be brewing a light ale extract recipe mix. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so now we filled our pot with six quarts of water and we're gonna heat it to 155 degrees. Once it gets to that temperature, we're gonna steep our grains for 20 minutes. So now we're heating it up to 155 degrees. We're gonna turn the heat off, add our specialty grains. This should bring the temperature to our desired mash temp of 153. And then we're just gonna cover it and let it sit for 20 minutes. Okay, now the timer's gone off for 20 minutes. We're done steeping. We're just gonna remove and discard the grains. Be sure not to squeeze them or else that's gonna release some undesired tannins which will affect the quality and flavor of the beer. And we're now just gonna heat to boil. And just when it starts boiling, we're gonna turn the heat off and remove the pot from the burner. Take our malt extract, open it up. And we're gonna really slowly pour it into the water the key here is to make sure that it doesn't clump or stick to the bottom because that can result in the malt extract scorching when we put it back for boiling. So just very slowly pour it in and stir. Okay, so now that the malt extract is nicely blended with the water, this is actually now called wort and it is the basis for the beer. We're gonna move it back to the burner and bring it to a boil on high heat. And once it starts boiling, we can start adding the hops. So the wort just started boiling. We're gonna turn it down to medium so that it doesn't foam over. Every recipe is a little bit different with the hop schedule. So it's important that you refer to your instructions to find out when exactly you should add which hop. All right, so now that there are only two minutes left on the timer for the boil, we're gonna go ahead and start making the ice bath. Basically just get as much ice as possible. And if you have ice packs, it's a good idea to throw them in too. Okay, so the timer just went off for the one hour completion mark. We're gonna add the last packet of hops. We're just gonna turn off the heat Move the pot over. And now we're just gonna stir for one minute. This process is called whirlpooling, and essentially what you're doing is just infusing the flavor of all the hops into the beer. And then once we're done stirring for one minute, we're gonna add it to the ice bath. Now that the beer is in the water, we're gonna use the same spoon we used for the boil, the reason being that it's sanitized from the boil. The beer is very susceptible to contamination from bacteria or anything else, so we just wanna be careful not to get anything in. We're just gonna stir for about two minutes to dissipate some of the heat. So now that we've stirred for two minutes, we're gonna put a lid onto the pot so that nothing gets into it. Occasionally we can come back and stir the water around the pot and rotate the pot opposite. Um, we just wanna make sure we don't open and stir again for the sake of contamination. And while this is cooling, we're just gonna make our sanitizer. What we need in this next step is going to be our funnel a strainer if you have it that's a little finer than the one we used for the sparge, rubber stopper, tubing, and the gallon. I'm also gonna reserve a cup of water for the airlock step, which happens in three days. So while the beer is cooling, we should check it periodically to make sure that it's getting close to our 75 degree target temperature. 
You wanna make sure that you sanitize the thermometer by putting it into the sanitizer for one minute in between each temperature reading. And then after a minute of sanitizing, we're gonna stick it in and just see where the beer is. Again, the target temperature is 75 degrees. We're going to take it out of the water and transfer it into the fermenter. If you have another strainer, it's good to use it for this stage just to filter out any hops that uh, are left over in the kettle. So we really want to fill to the one gallon mark. There's a little line here that reads one gallon. You want to be just above it. If you fall a little short, it's okay to take tap water and fill it up to that line. You just want to make sure that the spout doesn't touch the tip of this fermenter because you can get bacteria in it that way. The next thing we're going to do is just take the beer yeast, pour it in. We're going to take the sanitized rubber stopper, place it in. We're going to take our hands, dip it in the sanitizer just to make sure that if any bacteria is on it, it won't get into the beer. We're just going to lift the fermenter, firmly hold it and shake it. The objective here is to aerate the wort and break up these particles. Okay, now that we've shaken the fermenter, we're actually going to insert the tubing. The easiest way to do it is to remove the rubber fermenter uh, stopper and just slide the tube in. And then we're just gonna firmly put it into place to make sure there's a seal. And now we'll get another cup, fill it with sanitizer, and then we're gonna insert the other end of the tube into the sanitizer. Now that we've added the tubing, this is actually the completion of our brew day. Congratulations, you've made a beer. Um, now we're just gonna set this into a closet for two weeks. In three days, we're gonna check back in and just replace this tubing with a blow-off valve, but otherwise we are all done. Congratulations on making your first beer or on making your second or third or whatever. God. <laughs> no! Okay, now it's been three days. The fermentation has started, but as you can see, it's calmed down a little bit. So we're actually going to swap this valve out with a three-piece airlock. The first thing you want to do is take the airlock, separate it, and take the reserved cup of sanitizer from Brew Day, and just drop it in so that all of the components get covered. We'll set that aside. Uh, we're just going to pull this out. We're going to fill the airlock to the fill line. And then we're going to add the other two pieces back to reassemble. Place it in. And then this is going to go back to the closet where it was sitting for another 11 days. And then after a full two weeks of fermenting, we're going to move on to the bottling stage.